Hi friends. Today what I want to show is we'll take up a program, a question in fact, and we'll try to solve it while you seeing me solve it so that you get an idea of how you know programs are written in the railway. So let's start with this. The first uh, to start with this I want to uh, write a program for for solving a nonlinear or, or solving an equation. Okay. A simple program to solve an equation. And the method that we'll use is we'll use bisection method to to find out the roots of the to find the roots of the equation in picture. Okay. So uh, okay, so let's say we start here with a new script and we you know just put some things in program to solve an equation using bisection the first thing i'll do is i'll try to section method is so i'll do a quick search on bisection method and let's see what it gives us okay so we've got a cool wikipedia article on it let's go to that link and find out so bisection method in mathematics is a root finding method blah blah it finds okay you get answers okay so okay here we've got a cool diagram showing things so most of you might be familiar with this i have done this like long back and i think it works this way so this is uh, and the plot of that equation and we're interested in finding this point so you start with two approximations uh, a1 and b1 and let's say we, we say that at a1 we find the root we find the value to be f of a1 which is here positive and at b1 we find the value to be f of b1 which is negative so we can be sure that at least one root lies here okay so the next part you'll do is like you'll you'll take the midpoint of this a and a1 and b1 and you'll start at that so it's you're like bisecting the whole area into two parts and then you check at that point so let's say you come at this point b2 and you check the root and you find out that the root the f of b2 is still negative which says that the root lies between a1 and b2 so we don't need to check this area so then you'll take the midpoint here and that is how the system continues right so we've got some kind of algorithm here uh, while okay till till maximum iterations are finished the new point is equal to the midpoint and if f of c is equal to zero or this is less than tolerance okay so we can also have a tolerance level where we can say uh you know if we get this accurate it's fine and then we'll output the answer stop and if and increment the counter and if it fails like if we've not got the root then then we'll find out the sign of f of c which is the new point and if that sign is equal to the sign of f of a means if both are positive then we know that the root lies between c and b so we will replace the value of a with c else if they are not equal that is uh, you know f of sine of fc is not equal to sine of fa that means that the root lies between these two points and then we will replace b with the value of c okay so i've got some idea of what we're doing and let's take this as an example okay we'll take this as our equation and we'll try to solve it so okay we will start writing this program so let's say we we'll write a function we'll write a function for bisection we'll call the function my bisect so we have a function my bisect my bisection okay okay that seems like a good name and Oh boy, I forgot how, how functions are defined in MATLAB. It's been a long time. So I'll, I'll just do a quick search on function. Okay. How they work. Let's see what MATLAB gives us. Mm, open up, open up, open up. Right. Okay, this is taking long. Right. So syntax is okay. Output equals to function name input. Got it. So 
the output we want is our answer. Let's call it y is equal to function name and input. The input we'll take is let's take let's take the function like the equation as one of the inputs. So I think it's given by let's call it f. Or let's put f as our function. I don't know how to take functions as input. Let's let's figure out figure that out later. And then let's have a and b as our two boundary points. And so if we get these three things, we need to things send things out. The first thing I'll do is I'm since I'm not sure of how the syntax works, I'll save it. So uh, I know in MATLAB I have to save functions with the same name. I have to save the function name as the m file name. So that is done. And we were trying to solve this equation. So I'll define it as an inline function. So how do you do an inline function? Okay, so it suggestions is inline function. Let's check what inline functions are. Inline. Okay, this is Hmm. Okay, this is not what we're interested in. Okay, let's make a new function. Let's make a new function called as uh, function y is equal to f. Let me f be my function name. X is my parameter. End. And the function basically says that y is equal to, what is the question? x cubed minus x minus 2. So, we'll have x cubed minus x minus 2 that's it and we save this as f cool and just to see if this works we'll pass f of 2 and we get some answer uh, should it be 4 so it should be 8 minus 2 minus 8 right okay 8 minus 2 minus 2 that is 4 right and hence we get 4 cool so this works and so this is a test program we'll set the limits do we know the limits we know that the answer okay for above function okay so one and two okay we can find the limits ourselves so we write f of one is negative and f of two is positive so the answer lies between one and two we'll take a as one we'll take b as two and we'll say answer y is equal to by my bisection and we'll pass our function f and a and b and we'll see the output so f is not just simply f is a function right so i think you have to pass it with an at the rate sign okay we'll save this we'll call it let's call it test and let's try to run this thing okay so it gives output what's the error the error is in my base section line 4 Line four is end. Output y may not be assigned. Okay, so let's let's call it simple. Let's say y is equal to f of a, just for the sake of it. Okay, so we run this thing, and we get minus two, which was fine. So so this is cool. We can pass functions like this. Right, cool. So now we need, as our algorithm said, we need to run a loop. Let's have you know the max n, max n be the maximum number of iterations we are willing to go let's have max n as 100 okay we can fine tune it later on i'll say while max n is not equal to zero and we'll continue this thing okay right and every time we'll do max n is equal to max n minus one so every time it you know gets shorter by one and if and we'll start with this we'll start with c is equal to a plus b by 2 so that is the center point a plus b by 2 okay. and we come here right so sine so do we have a function called a sine so let's say i say sine of 1 is 1 and sine of minus 1 is minus 1 sine of minus 5 is minus 5. okay so we have a function called a sine that works fine so if Okay, so if 
sine of f of c okay now first we have to find the tolerance value right okay so we'll check this if f of c equal to zero or or you have i think or uh, a minus b how do we check the tolerance level what did the algorithm say the algorithm said that if b minus a by 2 is less than tolerance okay so let's take that if or if b minus a by 2 is less than tolerance let's define some value of tolerance let's say i'm willing to go to e minus 3 so 0 0.0001 let's find the point okay cool so if either of these conditions are true we will end this program so how do you end the program hmm. so do we have a break here break okay break break control flow debugging okay break break terminates the execution of for loop or while loop so when we do something like this statements in the loop after the break statement do not execute the initial loop breaks exist from the loop in which it occurs control plus okay i think it, it should break fine so if this is true we'll break okay and that's it and we'll do an else else if we have not found the solution okay if we have not found the solution okay we'll we'll put some value of y and then end let's we'll say y is equal to c which is our answer and then we'll end okay else we'll find new thing so we'll have another if block here if sine of f of c is equal to sine of f of a that means that the answer lies between a and b right okay if they both are equal in sign the answer lies between a and b so we'll define b now if they both are of the same line answer lies between c and b okay so we'll say that a is equal to new c right else we'll have b is equal to new c and does it seem fine so if this condition fails if a and this have different signs so b is okay yeah. That, that is true and we'll have an end here okay i think it seems fine to me and this is the only way it breaks ultimately and let's say the max conditions are uh, also fails we'll still have y is equal to c and then we'll break okay i don't know if this is fine we'll, we'll run this and see so we test our program and let's say run so we get the answer as 1.5 is 1.5 the right answer oh so 1.521 okay this is the right answer so some we made a mistake somewhere it seems so how do we find a mistake so okay we'll try to debug this program so this how do you debug a program? I think run. No. Let's put a breakpoint somewhere and then run this program. The stop there. Okay, it automatically gets into debug. I'll do a step in. So max is 100, tolerance is this is fine. C, what is C? No, okay, you can check the value. C is 1.5. Is max, while max is not equal to 0. So this is the underside. If f of C is equal to 0, or this is less than tolerance so that condition fails else if sine of f of c is equal to sine of a so what is sine of f of c so I, can i check these things if f of c or f of c is negative f of a is negative and f of b is positive 
so it lies between C and B right okay so these two sign will be true so you step in okay it goes to this loop okay I should have done that okay let's check it out okay the sign is equal so A is equal to C so the answer lies between 1.5 and 2 and find max is equal to max minimum so this becomes 99 and this is true this is fails okay and then we've got sign of oh we did not update the value of c okay for the next iteration we should have updated the value of c right what does what does the algorithm say the algorithm says okay this should be inside the loop right okay this should be inside the loop every time we have to update the line so I, I understood the problem I'll stop debugging and take this line cut it out paste it here right okay this seems fine for now let's save test let's remove our debug and we'll run this again 1.5205 is this fine 1.5205 Okay. this should be the end okay it stopped here because we had kept our tolerance as low let's increase our tolerance let's go like how many digits is this this is one two three four five six seven seven digits okay we'll go seven digits seven digits after decimal that's our tolerance so tolerance let's let's keep it seven we'll save it again test um, let's run this thing Okay, 5214 is that close enough that's close enough and okay to sh I think it's goes like if to, to see more digits after this format long okay and run this again okay so this is a much better answer 21379 21, 213928 213 okay I think okay this is <laughs> I, I know I really don't know which one is more accurate yeah it seems fine to me let's let's do f of y and then we'll know f of y is minus something this is excellent okay this works for me so that is how we have solved our y section problem can we can we make it better okay we can make it better by Okay, let's 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 find out how many iterations we take. Okay, let's find out how many iterations we take, and we'll pass iter. We'll give out two parameters so that we can compare things. I'll start iterations with zero, and every time we finish an iteration, I will increment iteration. It's equal to iter plus one. So that we'll find out you know how many iterations it takes so maybe in the next tutorial with the same problem we can you know run these things and see which one is better say y comma iter and we'll run this thing to get to this answer it took 23 iterations we keep that in mind so that's it my friends we have successfully written the program for bisection method i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned the process of how things are done and you can tell me how I can make it better or you know if if you have some doubt you can just you know write it in the comments thank you